Hi and welcome back to Toby's Three Rescues with Toby. Still me, my friends. In today's video, we will talk about this little friend. Oh, actually, no, we'll talk about this little friend. Le City New Chen Battery Box. Le City New Chen Battery Box. You might remember up there, we had a little, in quotes, little battery box. And we also made a video about it. And when I say we, it was me, basically. I did like that one so much and it did so well in my opinion. Um, they were so nice and kind. They sent me the new Chen battery box as well, which from the front looks similar. Well, actually it doesn't look similar at all, but it does look awesome. And we'll go into all the details about all the features. We'll do some testing, um, what we have here and stuff like that. We'll do that. But let me say a couple more things. The Lucidity battery box which you can use between, what was it, I think they said 70 and 300 amp hour batteries. This one, pretty much the same. And you will see where to stuff in the battery, how that works with this one. I think the most significant difference is the size, as well as this one comes with a 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter versus the battery box, which we had in the other video, only came with a thousand watt pure sine wave inverter. I think that's one of the major differences, as well as this one has a 20 amp MPPT charger um, for your solar you can hook up, so it's a couple panels more I would say, or bigger panels more compared to the battery box, which only comes with a 10 amp MPPT charger. Well, and of course all the interfaces might be different, this housing is completely different. We'll talk about that in a second as well, but let's talk about what comes with the package besides this box, because it does come without battery, the same as the battery box, no battery included, so you have to provide your own battery. Um, people would call it BYOB, bring your own battery. So this one is a BYOB device, bring your own battery. And it comes with a manual, of course. It does also come with a couple wires, similar to the battery box. This pretty much the same wires, I would say. It does come also with a tool to open up this box where we will look where the battery has to connect. I would say we'll take a little look outside first. So just that we make ourselves familiar with what are the interfaces, how does it compare to the battery box. And uh, I try to answer the question for you, does this one make more sense for you than the battery box, which is smaller and cheaper? I have to admit, I was using this box a lot. I was also using the battery box a lot because it's just a small footprint. It fits in the car quick but has only a 100 amp hour battery in it at the moment. But that's up to you, BYOB, bring your own battery. Let's look what we have here. The housing is aluminum, plaque aluminum. We have a plastic frame here up front and also in the back, you will see that in a second. And then we do have on off switch, which does go all the way off. And then you can just unplug it and take it with you. So kind of a security feature if you want to, for little kids maybe, and uh, human beings as well. Then you can switch it to off and you can switch it to on position. We'll not do that now, but we do have a display. Um, so it does come with a shunt and this display, when you turn on the battery, the main the entire unit, this one comes on as well. So we'll do it now. Um, I did play around with this, trying to reset. So what's visible at the moment, it's completely not what it is because uh, I did reset it to 100 amp hours. So anyways, you can change the settings in here. Um, there is some settings available. It also does come with a app. So we can also connect our phone with it. So then we do have um, USB-C uh, power delivery as well as Q uh, QZ 3.0. You can also turn it off and on here. Then we do have a 12 volt cigarette lighter over here. And that's all which has regarding USB-C. We do have, here's a 50 amp input output, the black one, um, it's an Anderson connector. Then we do have a yellow one, which is the 20 amp solar input. And you can, maybe you can, maybe not, but you can see that here, this Anderson connector is different from this Anderson connector. So it means, for example, we have this wire, which they delivered with it. It has a black one, a plaque connector, Anderson connector, and you can plug it in here. It does fit in the plaque, but it does not fit into the yellow one because it's a little different. And I don't know if you see that here well. Yeah. 
they are different, so different Anderson connectors. I'm not sure if the yellow one is also called Anderson connector, but it comes with a decent size wire to connect to, um, to your solar panels with the MC4 connectors, and that goes in here. Compared to the battery box, that's all. There is The battery box has, I think, two more of those normal Anderson connectors, 50 amp, and it even comes with a 175 amp uh, connector, which is the bigger version. So it has more interface, more connection points. But here we do have the AC outlet, which comes with a nice, um, cool, kind of a waterproof or protective uh, lid or cap for um, the AC connection. And we do have a um, button to turn on the inverter. So when we do that, the beep is the confirmation it's up and running. And then it's drawing a little more um, water to ambage. And you can set up the display, um, sleep time of it and stuff like that. So have it always on. And when you wanna have the inverter on all the time, this blue light will always be on. And when you turn it off, the display goes off as well. That's it is. Let's take a look around. Here we can see the Lissy new gen battery box uh, with a couple icons or witches, whatever you want to call them, up here, and then some certification um, here on this side. Which uh, I like this one. Read the manual, that's a good one. So, regarding read the manual, I forgot to mention it does come also with those instructions to tell you how you actually have to put in your battery. And they talk, uh, talk about of normal size batteries up here. Uh, no worries about that. It's this side, that's this side, the other side is just black, so we don't have to really go around. But we do want to see this little specification. So, same like last time, they put a little sticker on it with the specification, tell you a couple more information about the battery, and they tell you here, you know, row two, for example, battery type. They talk about lithium ion phosphate, HM, gel, lead acid, um, all those type of batteries you can use. Normal voltage, it needs to be a 12 volt battery. And it tells you also, row four, lithium ion phosphate battery, 70 amp hour to 300 amp hours. So that means you can use a wide range of batteries, about dimension, internal dimensions, care weight, charge methods, uh, and all the ports I showed you already on the front. Um, that's all what it's talking about regarding the AC output, which is quite interesting. You see that it says AC output maximum 2,500 watts for 230 volts and maximum 2000 watts with 110 volts so i only have to version 2000 watts 110 volts and then also operation temp temperature and the display and as much as i understand the smart battery monitor that's the city own smart battery monitor so it would be cool to get a hands on this unit as well i can see it inside i didn't take it apart yet but um they have their own one so I think now would be the time where we open it up and I'll show you where to insert the battery. Opening up this unit, you know, this is the side I just showed you, this is the back side and we do need the tool they delivered with it, a little hex and then we have one, two, three, four. basically take off the plastic and then this aluminum bag. Now you should make sure that you have all four screws or in this case bolts. You have them all, set them aside and don't lose them. To give you an idea the screws or the bolts bolt in here in this little channel uh, that's on all four sides. I can tell you already closing it up was a little hurdle. I was only able to screw in three bolts uh, because this one was not seated probably, and I'm not sure um, why that was, but um, was very difficult. One time I worked, second time I didn't. There are two more screws or bolts. They're inside here. We have two more bolts down here, and we have to oh, loosen them as well. A little shorter. And now we can just pull out this tray. Here we are. Don't mind those wires. <laughs> That's my mess. I can explain you later. So here we have positive and negative and they come with those boots already. So you see I put on my battery but they come with those boots. Those lug nuts they have a nice hydraulic crimp here. 
on both sides. So that's great. And you only have to think about how you push it back in, that it makes sense for the wire to not be squeezed or whatever. And when you tighten them down, so they have the normal lock nuts, negative, positive, slide the boot on, so it's protected, right? And then you slide back in. But we'll, I'll show you more from the inside now. All right, what you can see here, this is just the top plate with four screws holding in, and you can then pull it out, which is great, so really maintainable. There's more on the bottom, on the side here, on underneath this layer, but this layer does have the shunt, it does have the inverter, it does have two cooling fans over there. Here we can release also um, the type of the inverter. As well as you can see that the mounting the plate, which goes and covers everything here, is pretty close to those big cooling fans, so I think there's still a little space in between. Otherwise, um, might be a good cooling sink, kind of. As well as we can see here, those little wires, the little big one, which goes straight to the battery. So the negative is going into the shunt, the positive is going all the way over there, and then it's going down. This inverter is not adjustable in terms of um, do I have a 120 volt or 230 volt version uh, output. So this is uh, one or the other as much as I understood. Correct me if I'm wrong, leave some comments below. Let's uh, take a look in here. Well down here, it's not a lot more to see. I mean, here on this side is the MPPD charger. And we do have a pretty clear picture. We have a pretty clear way to read uh, which model it is. In this case, CPL 3220. And everything else is back there. Wires, back there are wires. And also you can see back there a positive uh, bus bar, as well as all the connections to the front, which going out there and up there is also the display, which uh, here is just from back visible, which should connect straight to the shunt. When you have everything back together, remember the positive shoot is a shorter cable, the negative is a longer one. So the negative should go in first. And when you do that, make sure that the sleeves or the rubber boots are still connected to it. Only thing you have to do is align those holes down here. And there we are. And by the way, and by the way, this one is a 12 volt, 100 amp hour battery. Pretty normal size battery. You know, there are the minis out there. The mini is a little higher, so that might be a more delicate and more problem to push in. I tried already. Um, you might have to mount it differently. What you can also do to get up to 300 amps, obviously, you can use those cells, build your own battery and it will be able to push it all the way in. This one is a 176 amp hour battery, which I had from a recent video. Um, they will fit in there easily to slide in. Um, with the 300 amp hour batteries, you might have to double check. I would, with this battery box, up to 2000 watt inverter, I would go with a 300 amp hour battery if possible, uh, and a good BMS, obviously. To close it, I like to stand it up like that. You need to push them in a little bit. And what you do next, you close, lit, everything's good, aligned, close it. There we go. Alrighty. Here we have it still charging as we saw in the app. So I only have a 100 watt solar panel up there. So that means we try, you know, around 80 watts we can get here maybe in. That's pretty good. And you can see I'm using the delivered uh, Anderson connector here, which is plugged in. And I would say the MPPT charger is doing a good job. Tries to get the maximum out. 20.4 volts. So here's the connector. That's the reading. And then I'm. Oh, there we go. Alright. Let me plug it back in so you can see the magic. And what's happening? It 
took a little time for me. I'm not sure how long it really took, but way too long because I unplugged it, plugged it back in. So I have to monitor if this maybe the adapter wire doesn't work or the MPPT does have some issues, but I'll monitor it and um, so far this is the max I can get with my solar panel, but no worries. I'll test it with a different method and we'll see how much we get out of it. Here in this shot, I took out a battery again. Just want to make sure everything's working properly. Here you can see, again, the MPPT heat charger and also the model number CPL3220. I do not know what's the manufacturer of this unit, CPL, I don't know. But when I plugged it in, you saw it earlier, it just took a little time before it starts. So I want to verify that everything is working and probably connected, and it is. So it's just that there's a delay, which is in this unit compared to the other unit looks like. Maybe depending on the voltage and stuff like that, I don't know. So regardless, I'll put it back together and we'll start testing the unit more and more and uh, see what we can get out of it. All right, I get everything set up just to test it, to see what the inverter is capable of, as well as the unit. And remember, everything depends also on your battery. So again, I have a 100 amp hour, 12.8 lithium iron phosphate battery in there. It's not a lot. It's probably 60 to 70% state of charge, even though you saw the display says 100%. I didn't charge it full up on purpose because I do some other tests with it. But for this test, we try to pull 2000 watt and a little bit buff to see how the inverter acts. So we do not have any information if there is some switch power available or not for this inverter. We'll figure it out in a couple of seconds, minutes probably. The source of this entire test is this unit. So I'll turn it on, very important. That's the first thing we need to do. The display comes back on. It's hard to read from the side angle, but I'll get you there later. I will and have connected a watt reader just to see what's the actual output compared to what the unit will consume. We'll also get the efficiency of the inverter afterwards, hopefully. It's at least as close as possible, I would say. I took off this last little cover. Inverter's off at the moment, that's fine. Don't need to do anything, plug it in. And from here, I do have connected I do have connected just uh, extension cord as well as uh, multiple plugs, just that I can put in multiple plugs and it should be rated more than 2000 watts, obviously, otherwise this will trip before the inverter reaches maximum. I have connected here this little power supply, and you remember up from one of the other videos, this is a little charger, flexible charger, which I'm using, and I'm using to charge nothing less than... Boop. The LCD battery box, that's the one connection I have. The second connection is this one, it's the heat gun. It's just pulling a lot of wattage in a very short time, so it's around uh, 14, 1500 probably. We'll see what the output is on the inverter, as well as what the inverter needs on energy on the battery, and then we have the efficiency at the end. We'll start the inverter on the new gen battery box. I think you can read it. Not super crystal clear, but you can read it, right? 145, 147. And at the moment, the inverter, probably a little bit less, is pulling 396 watts up here. So we have a good comparison of 395. That's what the inverter needs and pulls and pushes out around 343, 340. Okay, let's add a little bit more, because it's boring, right? So we'll start uh, level one on the heat gun. Now you can hear it in the background. I'm sorry about the noise. So right now we're pulling a little bit less than a thousand watts and 1142, that's what the inverter needs right now. Let's push it up, level two. Nice thing, it's adjusting the time remaining, of course. So right now we're pulling 1700 from the battery and pushing out 1420. I think we're not we're not there yet. Okay, we need to get more. Here you can see voltage drops. We have 790 watts pulling off this new chain battery box. And we have pushing out from the inverter 640. So that's the calculation we have to do. 790 and 652. All right, let's add the heat gun and see where we're adding up with level one. 1423. And that's 1,500 pulling out of the battery. 
and we have 1176. Let's push it to level two. We're pulling 1832, pushing out 1480. Man, that's good. Now we, oh, pulling over 2000 out of battery and pushing out 1500. Dang, we're still not there yet. Okay, new test. So right now I have the space heater, which I will now use. Let's plug it in and see what we get when it's on high. Alrighty. All right, so it looks like we are pulling 1800 watts, over 1800 from the battery, 1700, eh, it's adjusting at the moment, around 1700 and it is converting to almost 1400 output. So let me add my power supply and see where we're ending up. Power supply should make 20 amps into the battery. Okay, that means we're pulling 2,000 from the battery and we have 1,600. Oh my goodness. All right, let me stop this one and I'll add the second heat gun. So just the space heater, heat gun. Okay, let's level two. Now it says it's over and it shuts off. Wow, 2,500 it was pulling from the battery. Inverter still off. Might, back, might kick back in in a second. Turn it off, turn it back on. And we'll go ahead. Level one, and the heat gun, and we'll turn on the space heater. Right now we're pulling around 1800. Nice. From battery pulling 22, converts to 1700 T. Okay, let's see if we can add 200 more watts, which would be... All right, the great thing about this power supply, I can adjust it. So it means right now we're pulling 16, 1700. Let me add the power supply slowly. Up. And it's quite interesting. So we're pulling over 2100 already. It's adjusting. Now output is 1700. 1700, I cannot go higher. All right, I did charge it back up a little bit. Let's see. Let's turn on the space heater, pull maximum. You can see it from the battery, it's pulling around 1500, it's still changing 1600, 1700, and we're receiving 14, 1500. All right, let's turn on the up. Power supply as well, Let's see how far we can go with it. We'll go to maximum. Okay, it's not enough. Turn it off, let's turn on the heat gun, level one. Right now we're pulling 1800. Let's see if we can get to the 2000 at all. Oh, power supply. All right, but we're pulling from battery 2300. I think we cannot go higher with this battery. Unfortunately, there's not enough juice. Yeah. All right, let's stop it here. So I'm charging um, on the DC port over there. So it goes straight into the battery. In the meantime, we will do the test and see if it's a real pure sine wave. That means I'll plug it in, ding, ding. It does look like a pretty sine wave. Or I don't see any issues here. Turning it off. Turn it back on. Ramping up. It tells us down here, 115 volts. 15 here. I think that looks pretty good from what I can see. 60 hertz. So as mentioned, I'm still not an expert in this, but as long as I see a pure sine wave here, I think that's pretty nice. I think next time we'll do a little comparison to a modified sine wave just to get an idea and understanding what it looks like. For this one, now we'll wait until the battery is charged up and is able to push out a little bit more amps to see if there's any surge 
we can do. So far we were only able to get to 1700 watts out of the inverter. So we want to do more testing. Let's see. All right, we're back. Let's see if we can get up to 2000. I think, okay, let's start. I have the power supply and I do have the little space heater. So space heater go. goes first, turning it on. See, it is pulling. It's climbing up. That's good to see. We see also 1600 and around 1400. Still climbing up. 16, let's turn on the power supply as long as we have some power here. All right, let's see how far we can go. Good, not high enough, okay. Let's start with the level one heat gun. Now we pull over 1,000, 1,800. Let's show what we can get. Okay, 1,800. Uh, not going over 1800. Okay, but we are already with the ba battery over 2000 anyways. Yeah, that's max. I cannot go higher and then it shuts off. Oh, but it's interesting. The battery is still on. So it was not a battery shut off. It was the inverter shut off. Oh, let's see what's the max peak we can pull. 1800, 19, and then it shuts off. Battery is still on. The inverter which shuts off. All right, nice. That was not a true 2000 watt. Interesting. I'm surprised. Already, so we have done, I think, a lot of testing. What's missing is probably seeing if the MPPT charger can actually handle 20 amps. I have to be honest, I don't have enough solar panels to do this test, so I'll do it a little differently. I'll push in 20 amps and we'll see if it can handle in 20 amps. I do not need to go over 20 amps since it's just rated for 20 amps. Okay, this test will be similar. We'll use the power supply, which will basically act as the sun or solar panels. And this power supply is capable of zero to 24 volts up to 20 amps. So that means we'll see if 20 amps go in and we'll measure that. But here you can see I'm using the wire provided by the city. I have the MC4 connectors, and those MC4 connectors convert into the power supply. I did already turn on the power supply, and I will turn it to the maximum possible, so it means it can give up to 24 volts. And let me see, it's on right now. We have just normal, regular, 0.15 um, amps going out, so let's see. Turning the knob all the way to the max possible. And that's 27.5. Going back here, let's see if something's happening and if the MPPT solar charger will kick in at one point. Well, that's a great test um, to show you what's happening at the moment. That's happening to me somehow the whole time. Sometimes I plug something in, it works, sometimes not. Sometimes not, so I think there is some kind of bad connection. And I checked it's inside, not outside. So let me see if I can, when I'm plugging it and plugging back in, get this thing to work. Up, oh, it looks good. So I'm not sure why, um, maybe this MPT, MPPT charger is more sensitive or I have loose or bad connection inside, so which I, that's something I have to double check. Okay, let's see, it says 17 amps going in. 17 amps, interesting. So I think this is probably the most I was able to get pushing into the box around 18 amps so that's pretty good i would say still one or two amps short um, but i think that's something which uh, will work for you most likely since i'm not able to do a real life test um, i think this might be closer to 20. so yeah let me know what you think let me know if you are more successful with the mppt charger 
one more thing which came to mind. We have one MPPD charger. This unit supports multiple different chemistries besides lithium ion phosphate. But there's only one setting or apparently nothing we can change on the MPPD charger to change to a different chemistry or type of battery. So I talked and asked uh, all the manufacturer and asked, hey, why, how can we change that? And it's apparently not possible. This charger should be smart enough to detect which battery it is. But also, I checked with the other battery and realized, hmm, the charge voltage was at 13.6 or 13.5 floating, depends on from where you look at. So that's not a 14.6, which I expected for lithium ion phosphate. I don't know, just something to think about. I had some weird behaviors of this MPPT charger the whole time happening, so sometimes when I plugged it in, nothing's happening at all. So as mentioned, there might be some problem with my MPPT, MPPT charger or just the wiring inside, so I have to look into that sadly, so I cannot do a really real test. So take it with a grain of salt. I'm pretty sure everyone else's MPPT charger will work properly. Still, this box works pretty well. I feel like the only thing what I would love to see is definitely more plugs. This box seems to be bigger in size, has less outlets, which is kind of a bummer, I feel like. Um, the small box has more outlets and is smaller in size. So, you know, there's a trade-off. I like it that you have, of course, with this one as well, the capability of putting in way more batteries. I would recommend you go with the cells and a high BMS. Oh, a BMS, which has a high output, that would be great. Um, I think that's, that's really something when this one can cleanse in and with 2,000 watts in water, definitely. Uh, regarding the 2,000 watt in water, please let me uh, know in the comments below, do you have similar issues like I had? I wasn't able to get more than 1,800, sort of beep and shut down. And it looks like it's not my battery, even though it's just a 100 amp hour battery. When you have 300 amp hour batteries, cells in there, a good BMS, and you can pull up to 2,000 watt, that's amazing. Please, um, yeah, let me know if you are able to use the 2000 watt out of this inverter. I would like to see that. There, there might be a difference in terms of what's displayed here. You saw it's drawing over 2000 watt, but it was not able to push it out. It's also possible there's some discrepancy in, in this unit, which might not display properly the watts. In general, I like the Lucidity brand a lot. I think they have awesome products. Um, the build quality is good. Uh, I like that it's sturdy. The plastic here makes it just, you know, look a little better. It would be great as well if um, you could, if it would be easier with those um, bolts here to get in, as I mentioned also at the beginning. Um, if there would be kind of a different mechanism or something, or it's definitely built that it will fit, totally fine. But I'm, I'm just using three out of four bolts, so. It might need some improvement on this design. Um, it looks pretty cool. It looks, I like the display. I like these outlets, the outlets they have. Really nice. For 2000 watt inverter, you might need a second AC outlet. Just mentioning, you know, all in all, this is an amazing unit. And when you, as I mentioned, as you have 300 amp hour batteries, I think this one will glance and shine and you will be super happy and satisfied with it and up to 20 amp of sun can go and float into this. As the box before, this new gen battery box, you just need to have your own batteries, pop it in, let it run. That's it. So I took it for a little tour, so here you can see now um, also what it looks outside a little bit in comparison with the battery box. Please leave your comments below. What do you think about this test? I wish I would have had uh, the cells build already, so I could have used this one. That was the intention. Sadly, it didn't work out because of this. You can watch the video. Leave some comments. Like the video if you like that stuff, what I'm doing. Um, if you have some improvements, feedback, please leave it in the comment section below. I'm, I'm happy to read through it and see if I can improve things. And if you want to see more stuff like that, of course, also subscribe to the channel so you will see building a full function on battery out of a couple cells that's coming up soon. So thanks for watching. Tschüss!